Welcome to the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast brought to you by Break of Day Capital. The show focuses on educating syndicators and apartment owners on how to build systems and manage their properties more efficiently to become a best in class operator. 100% straight talk. Let's jump in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast. I'm your host, Gary Lipsky with Break of Day Capital. Be sure to join our Facebook group, Asset Management Mastery, where we have a great community of thousands of like-minded individuals sharing resources and best practices. Today on the podcast, we have Joseph Fang. Joe has been actively investing in real estate since 2003 and over the past few years invested passively in over 50 commercial real estate syndications. Joe is a podcast junkie and devours any material related to macroeconomics, real estate, and health. Welcome to the show, Joe. Can you start by telling the listeners a little bit more about yourself and uh, what you're doing? Choosing the right insurance coverage for multifamily properties isn't that complicated, if you know who to talk to. At the Garzella Group, we're uniquely qualified to help you navigate the range of policy choices you have, and we're committed to saving you 30% in the process. We do intensive market research and have nationwide relationships, so we can find coverage other insurance brokers simply can't. We should talk. Go to quotenow.biz, and we'll start the conversation. Hi, Gary. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm delighted to be on. So prior to investing in real estate full-time, um, I spent over a decade in the traditional investment management business. Um, I did five years with a hedge fund in New York City while going to business school at night. And then shortly after that, I came back home to my uh, hometown and worked for a, uh, a fairly large investment uh, management company, a uh, fund manager in Los Angeles for another seven years. And I think um, it was really through the going through the great financial crisis, um, you know, having um, gathered a portfolio of rental properties and having successfully uh, navigating through those 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 rough waters, uh, you know, and 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 hindsight realizing that wow, you know, real estate could actually be a pretty resilient asset class, uh, just just from my own personal, just from our personal experience, and particularly um, multifamily, you know, when 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 managed properly, um, I think that they make pretty resilient asset class, and um, since then, you know, we focused a. Uh, uh, investing in real estate full time. Um, what was really interesting is um, sometime around 2017, I think that's like when you and I met and, and I, actually this is when we really got into syndications, right? If you remember those good old days, um, we, we just found like learning, uh, learning about uh, commercial real estate syndications and, and learning how to use them really just, you know, uh, took our investment portfolio to a whole nother level. I mean, being able to leverage sponsors expertise um, really, uh, I would say, uh, supercharge our investment returns and gave us the the time freedom and the financial freedom to do the, the things that we want to do. So we were able to leave our W-2 jobs and basically uh, went on this extended sabbatical that that have just actually just recently finished. And with all that time, you know, my wife and I were able to kind of, uh, ex- you know, use that use that time to really get into the things that that we're also interested in, um, like alternative health and biohacking, and and basically just any subject that we we found interesting. And and, and we we love everything from macro to other types of real estate, you know, to wow, I mean, even venture capital investing, it, it just Everything you know, anything and everything goes. Well, I'm um, I'm excited for you to get back in the workforce and actually join our team. Um, you know, like you said, we've been friends for uh, five, six years now, and we met at uh, someone else that we both invested in was having a meetup, and we met there, and then we ran each other into each other at another meetup, and and just really enjoyed our deep discussions regarding real estate and health. And, you know, obviously, you know, you know, we, 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 we clicked and, and we're definitely aligned and, 
and you having invested in, in six of our deals, um, I mean, you really know what, what we're doing. And, um, and um, so I'm, I'm happy to, to have you on as our director of investor relations. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just really amazing the, the timing of all this. Um, I literally woke up one morning in November and just realized, you know, I, I want to get back into doing professional work. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, to be frank, I, I may have become um, kind of bored with the semi-retired life. I mean, it, it's been great, but I feel like, you know, there's so much more that I want to accomplish. And, you know, one of, one of my passions in life is really to um, basically share my investment knowledge and experience with as many people as I can and, and basically help bring them along, help build their wealth, you know, kind of let, let's all, let's all get to a better place together, you know? And I wasn't, I wasn't really looking for a job per se, but more of um like a, like a capstone role, um, maybe like a grand finale to um, my, the, the years of work and then the years of investing and experience that I can share with as many people as possible. And the very interesting thing is, you know, I I couldn't think of a better company and better person to work for. You know, I've, I've known you over, I've gotten to know you really well over the years. And, you know, I've always found you, Gary, to be a trustworthy and honorable person. And you're you're a go getter. You you don't say no. It's like if I if I give you an idea, you're like okay. Next thing you're like okay. I'm there's three things I you know wh which one should I do? You know it's like you you don't waste time, and I love that about you. And so you know, and also you know when you started Break of Day Capital, um, we became passive investors, um, and just kind of seeing how you operate. You know, you, I mean, it's been great seeing how Break of Capital, uh such a strong operator uh, managing, you know, being able to manage through, you know, in recent times uh, that it's, it's been so turbulent and not right. Like going from COVID and having to deal with it, with um, uh, the uh, eviction and, and, and uh, uh, rent moratoriums. And then, you know, even recently with this rapidly rising uh, interest rate environment, just seeing how break of day capital is able to, to operate through all these, turbulent waters and and being an investor and and seeing what you do and then still producing really good results for for us and i just feel like this was the you know that this is who i want to work for and this is the company i want to work for it, it it just feels right and it's it's just interesting because you know talk about you know timing you know talk about is it is it divine intervention or, or is it just the universe calling like literally like I emailed you and, and called you and said, hey, you know, do you need help? Because I know you've done so much with so little in just a few, you, you know, a few short years. And, you know, you know, I, I, I got to think you, you might need help. So so I, I asked and, and literally you told me you were looking to hire a, a director of investor relations. And then that's exactly the role that I want. Yeah, it was funny because. Oh, yeah. um... I, you know, I, I had hired someone uh, earlier in 2022. It wasn't the right fit. wasn't what I was I, I was looking for. And finally, it took me a while to figure out what I needed to hire for. And and that Monday, I was going to place that ad. I was committed to that. And you you emailed me Saturday, and I said, okay, I'm 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 heading to the airport. I'll give you a call in a couple hours, and we kind of talk through uh, the role. And you know, you know talk through you coming back into the workforce and everything. And, you know, over many conversations, we thought it was a good fit for us. And, and uh, so sometimes, you know, it's funny how things work out. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I definitely think of this as the perfect role for me at with what I want to accomplish, you know, so thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, I know you, you have invested in 50 deals, so you've, you've got to probably have some, some good war stories you know, oh, yeah. why, why don't you share one one or two of those with us? So, you know, when, when you've been investing long enough and it, it, and it's, you know, through through my entire, you know, 25, 30 years of investing, you know, you're, you're going to take on some losers. It, it's That's just how it goes. And then, you know, hopefully we learn from them and not make those same mistakes again. 
But I'll, I'll just give you a, a two or three examples just to kind of let people know like, you know, what, what, what could happen, right? So um, one of the deals that we invested in was a, was a development deal, single family residential development deal in Reno. And it was with a, 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 an experienced developer with, 40, with a 40 year track record, okay? But despite all that, um, sometimes we just couldn't overcome the headwinds, you know, from macro forces. And you know, we had to deal with weather delays. We had to deal with COVID. We had to deal with supply chain issues. So, you know, ultimately the deal, you know, underperformed significantly, right? And um, like another one, and this is um, kind of a funky one. Um, sometimes we, we kind of get into the trap of wanting to over diversify, maybe you know, maybe invest in things that we don't really understand. But for a while, you know, in our investor group, um, we were very interested in investing in life settlements. And they're, they're basically just an insurance policy that insurance policies that you can buy at um, at a discount, you know, a, a relative its mature value. So shortly after we invested in life settlements, um, the, the fund had to take a 10% drawdown because the third party actu actuary um, through their black box modeling decided that, oh, your policies are not worth as much as you thought. And so, you know, it, it was just kind of like, you know, in trying to invest in a non-correlated asset, which is what how this was marketed to us, you know, we ended up taking on risks that we didn't really understand. And, you know, ultimately the the fund uh, significantly underperformed and, and that just, that was a really good lesson about, you know, only invest in things that you really understand, which in, in our case is just really sticking to real estate. Um, finally, and this is the one that, you know, I don't want to say that it hunts me. It, it, it's just something that I, I always remind myself of is, you know, we invested with a multifamily sponsor who had, you know, many years of, of real estate experience, but not, not necessarily in multifamily, but just, you know, in, in, a, in a, a bunch of different types of, of real estate investing, you know, um, really, you know, talked a good game, you know, it was more of a marketer, probably in hindsight, you know, probably would have been better off as, as, a, as a syndicator or just as somebody who raises capital. But ultimately what happened was, um, you know, about a year into the deal, um, you know, we started having um, basically a lot of operational issues. And so couldn't get the rents uh, where we wanted to go, uh, had trouble keeping up with occupancy. And then ultimately um, just had a lot of uh, 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 issues with the, with, with the property. For example, severe plumbing issues and even foundation issues. And then just it was just crazy like to learn about these things after the fact, you know, how come this wasn't caught during due diligence in the, at the purchase time, right? And so ultimately um, the, the, the sponsor's uh, um, option was basically to convince the investors to basically sell the property at a smaller loss as opposed to waiting for a larger one. And, you know, and, and, and this was one of our first deals. So, you know, now, now our due diligence is much better, but it just kind of, it was a little bit um, annoying because I feel like the sponsor gave up and, um, and just really didn't really, ultimately didn't really care about in the investor's money. So that's something that I always think about. It's always in the back of my mind and it's how, um, it's, it's how like, you know, this, this is the reason why, like, I'm today. I'm looking for sponsors that are very strong operators. And I, I remember you telling me stories like you would, eventually, you would like drive and meet sponsors too, and really kind of try to understand, look at their team and 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 whatnot. So, any kind of other lessons that you've learned from, you know, questions to ask or warning signs or something for our listeners out there um, to know, you know you know, like a, a warning sign to, to not invest with a, with a sponsor? I mean, th th there's so many things, you know. Um, I mean, you know, truth be told, um, you, you really don't know. I mean, sponsors can have, you know, they have very fancy pitch decks. You know, they can show you very sophisticated underwriting models. I mean, you can you can do all kinds of due diligence questions and they'll have the best answers. 
But regardless of their track rec record, you know, whether they've done one deal or 50 deals, I mean, you know, you, you're going to be a first time investor with them. You know, there's always a first time. Right. And you really you, sh you just don't know for sure until you see how they operate. You know, so I really want to focus on talking about, you know, the, the you know, over the years and, and, and you know, experiencing different sponsors, I, I feel like the thing that you really want to focus on is, is how well they operate the property, because that, re that really is what determines, you know, a successful outcome versus a, you know, less favorable or even a bad outcome. Right. So, I mean, you know, you, you know, the uh, operating a rental property is not, it's not rocket surgeon, you know, rocket surgery, right. It's, but where it's difficult is that you really got to get into the nitty gritty details, making making sure everything gets done in a timely fashion. Issues are properly addressed. So, I've through my experience, I feel like the strong operators are the ones that really focus on, you know, communicating with the investors exactly what they're doing to drive value, and how how that 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 implementation of the business plan is how is that translating into actual results? You know, you can measure key performance indicators, you know, you can look at, you know, actual versus performa. So then they can really show you, really communicate with you um, what it is that they're doing. And, you know, and, and, and plus, you know, they're also the, the, the other side of that too, right. When, you know, when properties are not performing, you know, what are they doing to fix it? You know, what are they, you know, what are, what, what, you know, well, first of all, you know, it, it's good to, to see problems before they even happen. But when problems do come, how do you fix it? Right. And so the good sponsors really communicate that well and not, not only, you know, uh, effectively, but also in a timely manner so that the investors can feel confident that the sponsors knows they know exactly what they're doing and they're doing a, a, a good job managing the entire process from beginning to end. Um, I also want to add just one more thing. Um, I've also learned, and this is probably a very rare um, occurrence, is that the absolute best sponsors are the ones that value your capital more than their own, okay? And what I mean by that is, you know, running apartments, it's like these things have a, have a life of their own. It's like they don't care that you, you know, you underwritten, you know, for you to make a certain amount of money on a certain time. It doesn't care. It doesn't know that you have a model, right? Life happens. And so despite your best efforts, you know, if, if things don't go well, you know, the good sponsors, the really good sponsors will, will step in with extra liquidity to protect that, to protect that asset until, you know, we, we, we have enough, you know, until there's enough time to, to, get the asset to perform again. And that, that to me is one of the biggest keys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you talked about operations, which is so key, you know, a really strong operator can make a, a, a bad deal. Good, a good deal. Great. Um, you talk about, you know, problem solving, being able to take a punch, uh, being proactive and, and that liquidity piece. Cause yeah, I, there's, there's a lot of sponsors out there that are, you know, they, they use the acquisition fees to, to cover their, you know, to keep their lights on, but there's no, there's no backstop, you know, God forbid there's a shortfall. They're coming to investors. The first thing, you know, they don't have the money to, to lend uh, the, uh, the company uh, even for a short term, they are, they are, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, trying to build a business. And, and um, that's dangerous when you're investing with, with someone like that. Um, great, great insight. So tell the listeners a little bit about your role with, uh, with Break of Day Capital. So I am the Director of Investor Relations. And what that means is I, I continue to serve uh, our existing investor base um, with whether, whatever, whatever needs that they have. Um, basically, um, you know, staying, uh, keeping them updated with all the things that we just talked about, you know, operationally. When things are going great, when things are not going so great, and what are we doing about it? And just making sure that we, we're always consistently and and uh, communicating with our investors in a timely fashion. And then uh, the other thing that I that I'm my role uh, 
that I do in my role is basically um, to connect with uh, potential future partners, you know, and, and that's anybody from the sophisticated investors um, all the way up to uh, family offices and institutional investors. You know, I, as you know, um, uh, investing in these large scale multifamily real estate is a team sport, right? I mean, the more deals that we do, the more the more good deals that we um, that we can offer to our investors, uh, the more capital we need. So we're always, you know, we're always growing on on both ends, you know. And so um, I want to make sure that you know we communicate the, you, you know, with our services, you know, what what we do. Make sure people understand uh, all, all the all the things that we do. Absolutely. Well, I'm super ex excited with your experience and. You know, you seeing, you know, looking at it from all different perspectives and, and bringing that bringing that unique perspective to the company. What are you what are you most excited about? Wow. A um, couple of things. OK, um, I'm very excited about working with Break of Day Capital. Um, I'm ex um, I'm excited in doing whatever I can to to help the company grow. Um, ultimately, um, like I said, the for me, uh, the goal is to help bring as many investors along and you know, I, I just have a passion for helping people. And then I want them to, uh, I want to be instrumental in, in helping investors build their wealth. Um, nice. And then, um, you know, because, you know, I've, I've brought, you know, many friends and family um, into syndications, which, you know, frankly, like most people never heard of it. Um, and I, you know, over the years, I, I've seen the positive impact that has made in their livelihood. And it's, boy, it, I tell you, it, it feels good, you know, and, and um, I want that to be my legacy, you know, and I, that's, this is why I, this is why I joined your firm. And this is what I hope to bring to, to all of our investors and, you know, the ones that are here with us today and the future ones. Um, now, as far as like, um, uh, just a broader, you know, if you want to just zoom out and talk about the the broader economy, you know, and this is a good reminder that, you know, despite all the doom and gloom and, you know, sentiment that's out there and and the dark, some some of the more dire predictions, you know, um, I, I just want to remind folks, you know, we're going to get past this, you know, like we always do. And just just focus on what you can do to make improvements, improvements every day and Keep your head down. Keep, keep doing, putting in the, the hard work, and you know, don't don't lose you know your your sight on the prize. You know, don't don't lose focus on your long term goals. You know, we're we're all gonna keep growing, and we're all gonna keep um, developing. And um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, in in two thousand twenty four, two thousand twenty five, we have a real estate market that's that's roaring again. Nobody's saying that now, but you know, it's it's pot. It's quite possible. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Well, I've got one last question for you. We usually ask uh, at the end of the podcast, what is your asset management superpower? But I'm going to ask you, what is your investor relations superpower? I love this question. Um, well, first, um, I have a, a very deep passion for talking about investments, you know, all types of in investments, you know, with particularly focus in the uh, particularly a focus in the multifamily syndication uh, portion, but um, and I also love connecting with people. I love getting to know people, and I, I find people very interesting. I always meet lots of cool and interesting people. Um, and I think that this is something that we you know we can always connect on. And you know, finally, um, I think Gary and I, Gary, you and I share the same uh, philosophy. Um, we come from um a mind, a perspective of abundance where we feel like, you know, as long as you can keep adding value, as long as you can keep helping people, you know, it, it, first of all, it's a, it's a very gratifying experience, but also, um, you know, I, I believe that, you know, somehow the universe rewards us for, for being a good citizen, right? And you just never know how, you know, how that favor comes back, you know, when you least expect it. So, it's a, it's a really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a win-win, you know. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you coming on the show and talking about your new role and all of your, your knowledge from investing in so many deals. Where can listeners find out more about you and connect with you? 
So I would love to connect with anybody who wants to talk about investments, you know, and particularly uh, multifamily syndications. Um, so first you can come to our website at breakupdatecapital.com or you can just email me directly at joseph at breakupdatecapital.com or you can even find me on LinkedIn at Joseph Fang with Break of Day Capital. I look forward to hearing from all of you. All right, this is Gary Lipsky signing off. I'll be back next week with another informative episode on the Real Estate Asset Management Podcast. To all of our listeners, thanks for joining us. And if you like this episode, please head over to iTunes or Stitcher and like, subscribe, and review this podcast as it will help us grow our audience and reach more people. And if you'd like to learn more about what we do at Break of Day Capital, head over to our website, breakofdaycapital.com and sign up for our newsletter and or fill out our investor application. We'll talk to you next week.